There are multiple ways to record depreciation for an asset, and in this video we're going to talk about the straight line method. So let me just jump right into an example. So let's say that uh, you have a pizzeria and you decide you're going to buy a new uh, oven. So you have a, p a pizza oven to cook your pizzas, and this oven is going to last, you, you estimate it'll have a useful life of five years. So that's useful life. That's how long you're going to use uh, this this asset. And then the cost of this asset, what, what your purchase price is, let's say that's that's $50,000 you pay for this pizza oven. Now we have to think about this $50,000 here. How are we going to spread that cost over the useful life of the asset? Uh, and one way to do it is just kind of like to evenly spread it. For example, we just say, okay, let's just take this $50,000 cost and let's just divide it by the number of years that we're going to use the asset. Five years. And that just means, okay, we use up $10,000 a year of this asset. We can think of that, that's, that's our depreciation. And we call, kind of call this the straight line method because basically we're just we're just doing this in a straight line. Every year is just going to be ten thousand, and then the next year we take another ten thousand in depreciation. It's not it's not increasing over time the amount of depreciation we take. It's not changing. Uh, it's just basically the same thing every year. Uh, we take that same depreciation amount. Um, assuming now we're assuming here that uh, this asset would be worth zero. Um, at the end of five years. And we're going to talk about a case where that, that wouldn't be the case in, in a moment, but for right now, so we're basically taking this, this depreciation and we're spreading the cost of this asset, the $50,000, uh, we're spreading it across this five-year period evenly. So every, each year gets $10,000 of depreciation, $10,000 of the cost of that asset. So the journal entry that you would have, so let, let's just kind of go back and say, okay, we purchased this asset, let's say, on January 1st, 2017. Um, so we would debit, uh, you could debit oven, or you could call it, uh, let, let's call it equipment. So that, that'd be a debit of 50000 And then let's just say you paid cash for it. So we credit cash for 50000 now, what is the entry going to look like for our depreciation, assuming we're using this straight line method here? Well, at the end of the year, December 31st, 2017, we're going to take depreciation expense. Remember, that's an expense. And that's going to be a debit of 10000 so I'm just pulling that right from here. So remember, we said it's going to be 10000 a year. And then we're going to credit something called accumulated depreciation. And then that's just going to be 10000 Now, accumulated depreciation, if you remember, is a contra asset. So if we look at the balance sheet, let's just say, this is, here's our mini balance sheet here real, real quick. Let me just scroll down a bit. So if we were to look at our balance sheet, and we have this oven, we'll just call it equipment. Let's just assume that this was our only PP&E. So, so, so we've got this equipment. Uh, we're going to have, as of December 31st, we're going to have uh, the equipment is, is recorded at cost of 50000 uh, but then we're going to subtract out the accumulated depreciation of 10000 so we're really going to have 40000 Now, what has happened here? Well, we've taken uh, some of the cost of this asset, and we've, we've expensed it over because now we've used this asset for one, one year, and so we've used basically 20%, one out of the five years of this asset. And so basically we took that as depreciation expense and we recorded it. Now what if, what if we say that this pizza oven uh, at the end of the five years is not going to be worth zero? Let's say uh, that it's going to be worth, um, I don't know, say uh, $10,000 that, that we say, okay, so, so, so let me just kind of write out how this would change things. Uh, because it is going to change what our what our depreciation amount will be. So let's say so. Let me just kind of reduce. So we've got we've got our oven. Uh, we say it's going to last five years. That's our useful life. And then uh, we have a cost or our purchase price or however you want to think about it of the oven is fifty thousand. But now 
we have, and I'll put it in a different color, we have the salvage value. Salvage value just means, okay, this is what we estimate that this machine will be worth when we're done at the end of the five years. So if you were to uh, junk this machine or, or sell it to somebody else or something, like you, you basically say, okay, I'm going to use this machine for five years. And at the end of five years, is it going to be worthless or is it going to have value? And if it has value, that's the salvage value. That's what we're talking about. Now, we have to do a, a little little change in our calculation. So now when we do the straight line method, and we take this 50,000 and spread it over the five years, uh, we have to factor in the salvage value. And let me just show you. So, so, so here would be our formula. We'd say, okay, 50,000 minus that 10,000. And then we're going to spread it over the five years. Now let me explain why we're subtracting this 10,000. Because remember, what we're doing is we're taking the cost of the asset, this 50,000, and we're spreading it over the five years. That's why we're dividing by five. But if we do that, if we don't account for this 10,000 value it's going to be having at the end, then basically we're depreciating this oven down to zero. But we know it's not worth zero at the end of the five years. It's worth $10,000. So we have to account for that. We can't just depreciate the asset to zero. We would be understating the value of our assets because at the end of five years, you'd look at our balance sheet and it would say, oh, well, we've got this oven is worth zero, but in reality, it has a value of $10,000. So we have to account for that so we don't depreciate this 10,000 value or the residual value is another way of, of kind of thinking this salvage value. The asset is going to have residual value, remaining value at the end of the five years, so we don't depreciate the value that's still going to be there at the end. So, in any event, we just end up with uh, now we have basically forty thousand. This is the amount we are depreciating divided by five, and that's going to give us eight thousand, and that's that's per year. So now again, if we had our journal entry at, at the end of the year. Um, so December 31st, uh, we're going to be making an entry. We're going to have depreciation expense. Uh, we're going to debit for 8,000. Right. So now it's less. It's not 10,000. Um, accumulated depreciation will be 8,000 because that we're taking less depreciation each year because we're not depreciating the entire cost of the asset. Uh, we're only depreciating the part of the asset that's being used up, right? So if you look at the difference between 50000 and 10000 that 40000 that's what the asset is declining in value, right? So that's what the, the oven's going down in value 40000 as we use it over these five years. And so that's the cost that we need to spread uh, over the five-year period.